Good evening and welcome as we join you right here on Daily Mirror for another edition of Date with Nanu. Uh, thank you for those who have tuned in. We would like to thank our sponsors who make this show possible. Our friends from Quantum, not forgetting our friends from Vikramarachi Opticians, Jonathan Studios, Moen Pick Hotel, followed by Manning Checks and not forgetting British Cosmetics. All right. Today, I'm going to be speaking to someone fascinating. I love his energy. He's full of life. Always uh, lots of things to tell and lots of things to listen to him about. So let's get on with the show. For me to get on with the show, I need to find my guest. It's still like kind of quarantine, don't you think so? Although we are at home uh, for just for two days these days, uh, just prevention is always better than cure. And that's how they like to roll. And that's always good. All right, uh, let's kind of see if I have my guest here. Yes, I do. And I'm going to have the one and only Delon. It's connecting and I have him already. There you go. How are you? <laughs> Good, man. How are you, Danu? Long time no see. I know. You know, it's, uh, I have known you for over... Over 10 years. Over 10 years, closely. Yeah, of course. I still remember my thinner days when I did the shows with you. <laughs> oh, you look great. You look great, buddy. You look amazing. Oh, you're too kind. You're too kind. <laughs> All right. So let's introduce Delon. For those who would have seen his music videos with Ashanti. Uh, by the way, I love that song. Uh, I've oh, always uh, loved it. Yeah. Uh, uh, you Hantane. Know, Hantane. And you know, the best part is back in the days, that was technology where she zooms into the laptop and there you are, you're singing. <laughs> Now we do that, like, for real all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's amazing. Uh, you, have, you have touched films here. You have touched music here. Um, so for those who are watching, he is quite homegrown, although he was born in the United States. All right. To start things off, how is work? What is happening in your music career? What's keeping you busy these days? Yeah, so lots of things. Hold on. Can you hear that by any chance? Let me one second. Let me get it right. Um, hold on. Just tuning it. Can you guys see this? Yes. <laughs> so let me tell you. Let me tell you what's happening. Um, so uh, two years ago, I filmed a movie called Hollow Point, which is an action film, and I became. Um, as far as my knowledge, the first uh, Sri Lankan or South Asian um actor to play a lead role in a major hollywood film and that releases wow. in theaters uh probably next year now because of covid but it was supposed to release at the end of this year that's amazing uh, yeah it was pretty awesome i'm very excited about that um i had released so basically i i, I crossed over from delon d-e-l-o-n to delon j d-i-l-a-n-j-a-y because i wanted to make more um i would call it homegrown music like melody based Okay. Music where I could sing about love and loss and and sing, you know, because uh, I spend Sorry most of my I'm life. Having just, I have to, yep. I have to clean my nose. <laughs> oh, you're fine. I have to apologize. Uh, no problem. Um, I spent uh, all of my life as a rapper, and then I I, I wanted to because I wrote songs all my life. I, I've always written songs for other artists, but never sang it myself. So I got in, involved into wanting to do that. So I did that. So then I released two albums as a singer. Basically, no raps, because <laughs> mm. I was like, nah, I think I'm cashed out on this for now. Okay. And, and then uh, during that same time, um, I, uh, I wrote a book. And the book is called How wow. to Be More Confident with Women, Seven Easy Steps for the Genuine Guy. It's not a player's book. It's a book for people to find love. And uh, I just got that book, not just like uh, for the last six months, I've been working on a publishing deal with that book. And that that publishing deal is now in and signed. Okay. And so that book will come out. Does it come out this year, Ben? COVID shit's got everything messed up, so. <laughs> language, language, this is Sri Lanka. <laughs> uh, yeah, the COVID has lots of things, you know, pushed back. Is that better? <laughs> yeah, much better. Take two was so much better. So much yeah. better. Um, so, so, you know, there's that, um, there's another film I'm involved in here, um, not as a producer, so, as an actor. Who did you, who did you sort of act along with? Who was your... Uh, so we had Luke Goss, Michael Pere, Juju Chan, um, who else is in that film? Luke Goss, Michael Pere, Juju Chan. 
Jay Moore, who was in uh, Jerry Maguire. Who? Yeah. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, I said Michael Pere. Um, so That's it's kind of like, cast. yeah, it's a good cast. Um, so, you know, it's, it's going to be great. It's, it's, it's something that's going to go in a limited theater release and then go straight to Netflix. So it'll oh, be on Netflix. amazing. Netflix yeah. is the way forward nowadays. Yeah, it is. I think everyone, it truly is. Yeah. So let's speak a little bit about, uh, so today. It's not, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So now these days, everything has been, the hype has been about the United States. COVID has taken the back seat uh, in terms of news. It has all been about, yeah. um, you know, the, the issue that has gone down in the U.S. and fighting for the rights of the black. Um, tell, me about, tell me about the situation where you are living and how is it? Let me, tell you, let me first tell you about the, the experience of what Black Lives Matter does to even Sri Lankans. Uh, when I was a kid, before I, and I just posted this, before I even graduated high school, I'd been pulled over, had two guns drawn on me asking if it was my car, right? Their first question was, is this your car? A gun here on this side, a cop gun, hot, the guns are hot, right? Uh, this is in my own city. Uh, I was running to Chase Bank from Bank of America across the street. I got I got pulled over, handcuffed, sat on the curb uh, for 20, 30 minutes. And then they told me that there was a robbery in the area. And then they let me go. Um, I've had so many really, really, really shitty run-ins with the police. That doesn't mean I hate the police. So let's not make it. I want to make this clear. But it does mean that we're dealing with something that I have nothing to do with. A very systemic part of America that whether you're brown, whether you're yellow, whether you're black, you're involved in it, whether you like it or not. You know what I'm saying? You're involved. If you're born and raised in America, or if you're here, just here, you are now a part of the American way. And the American way has, you know, 500 years of inculcated slavery, you know, yeah. which has caused some, some very, you know, has, un has tipped the balance of fairness for colored people in America, right? Because you have to remember, America is what I call, America builds super races. Like, unless you were the strongest, toughest black man, you weren't making it on that boat. Unless you were the, weren't the smartest, most educated Indian man, you weren't getting a visa to come here in the early days, right? Even Asians, right? So that's why you have these weird stereotypes that black men are athletes and Asians are good at math and... And, 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 and Indians are doctors is because they're the only ones allowed to come to America. They're the only ones allowed to. You think they would have given a Sri Lankan artist a visa? No, I don't care about Sri Lankan singers. You get what I'm saying? So in dealing with kind of this systemic problem, right? It's not just racism. It's a really like inbred problem. You have spouts of major upset. Because that's not the only black man who's died to the hands of a cop recently. You understand? But you have to look at it kind of like this is, you know, we're here and then we got COVID. And then, you know, yeah. we have all these things happening. You, you smashed up a bunch of Americans. Sri Lankans too. I think you guys had a uh, time when you couldn't go out, right? Of course. Yeah. So you smash up the whole world into their house for two and a half months. You tell them that they can't work, they can't make money. And you said, we'll help you, but we haven't given you any loans. Have you got a loan? No, neither have I. So they're fucking pissed already. You understand? They're irate. You understand? And then all of a sudden you go, oh, guess what? On top of that, I want to just kill somebody and videotape it and not arrest the cops. Yeah, so people took off. People took off. Justfully so. People took off. And I don't think that if everybody was working, this would have happened. That would, that's conjecture, but I just don't think so. Right? I think this is a lot of, it was a lot of things that were building up to this moment. I agree. And, and this sort of, sort of, you know, broke the camel's back. A uh, little bit about, you know, we, we saw a few Sri Lankans standing up there, which was nice. You know, mm. I think we come from a country where Lots of things have been today, although 
you and I think equality is great and we are happy to live in a world where at least in most levels we have come out of that. Uh, yeah. I belong to the minority and it's always nice to know that, you know, the minority is loved by the majority and they right. speak for them. And yeah. do, do you feel that this has brought the United States together where people have sort of, they see everything brown now, they see everything as one color without seeing yeah. in colors? Um, I think, you know, it's funny that you just said that because I think it's so interesting to have the viewpoint that we have as Sri Lankans, especially living in a country that's not our own. Because I'm Singalese, my parents are Singalese, right? So in Sri Lanka, I'm a majority. So as a majority, I never notice that I'm the majority. You get what I'm saying? How am I supposed yeah. to notice? I'm not the minority. Yeah. Right? True. But then when I come to America, I'm a minority, a very clear minority. Right. So you so if you're some, someone from another country, you can see both sides better, more clearly than an American. Right. And so for that point, I think that we are seeing a change in 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 the way Americans view black, white and and other colors, because I'll tell you something. I was here for the 92 riots. Right. I was a baby. I was a kid, but I was still here present. And when you saw those riots after they beat up Rodney King, right? Cause they even came to my dad's office to like destroy his stuff. But he said black, you know, like ethnic owned on his, on his building. So they didn't destroy his building. Um, it was all black people. Everybody was black who was rioting. Not, not rioting, protesting. I mean, there was riots too, you know, which is an unfortunate part of just, yeah. you know, any, any type of movement, but now, if you look at who's protesting, it's everybody. White, black, Asians, anybody. Dude, anybody who's anybody from a generation below ours who doesn't really know about systemic racism because they had the internet to look at every color in of the course. world are getting out there and going, I agree, Black Lives Matter. I fucking agree. I agree, Black Lives Matter. I don't care if I'm white. I still agree. Do you understand? Now, that's a change that we've seen in 20 years that's just incredible. I mean, I... I love that. That that makes this so beautiful to be in America because you can see that things change. And also, you know, we're in gen we were still in what you call generational wealth in America. So you have all these very very rich Americans who got rich a couple hundred years ago whose families are just rich. But now if you look from the 80s where you take guys like Michael Jordan which are which were famous in the 80s. He has 20 year old kids who are also incredibly rich and every other black athlete who made millions of dollars, right? Yeah. So you have a balance, a little bit better balance. Oprah, who's a billionaire, Jay-Z, you know, you have all these black billionaires, right? Dre, sure. so you, 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 we're no longer in white generational uh, wealth. We're in white and black generational wealth in America. Yeah. and. Two more generations will be in white, black, Asian, and Indian generational wealth in America. So I think it, sometimes it just takes a little time for these old ideas to die, you know? And we could see, we could see a change. And in my first album, I talked about that. I talked about how over generations, at the very end of the album, I said, you know, there won't be racism because everyone will be brown, lighter yeah. or darker brown. Like you, Ooh. they'll look like you or they'll look like me. And that's it. Exactly. That's, that's all we're going to have. So, um, Just wanted to speak to you a little bit about, um, you know, something that I have seen in the last few years and what we have always spoken about is the fact that the youth, the, 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 the leaders of today who are in their 30s, in their late 20s, they do not see this world separated. Yeah, they are the I ones agree. who have made the initiative. It could be for making a change when it comes to the environment, making the change when it comes to political changes, making, making their voice be heard for justice. Um, right. I feel that us, we are the type that could change everything. Um, Absolutely. So uh, I'm so amazed that, you know, sometimes when lots of people who leave from Sri Lanka, they go into another part of the world where they become minority automatically. Automatically, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I know the shift must be hard. And uh, I just wanted to touch base on that situation. Uh, yeah. Are things calm where you are living? Um, in Tarzana, I'm fine. I live in Tarzana. Um, 
But I went, I went um, yesterday, not yesterday, the day before, and helped clean up Van Nuys, which is about 10 minutes north of me, uh, where looters were. Protesters weren't there. Looters came and, you know, broke glass. And, you know, I, I, I worked with some union guys, and I helped board up, like, a bunch of um, stores. And where I am exactly is just, it's not really here. I'm very much far away from Los Angeles. I'm, like, 35, 35 40 minutes away from Los right. Angeles proper. So, right. yeah, so it's not really here, but I, I drove everywhere. I drove Santa Monica. I mean, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, right? So, like, mm. I've lived in six or seven different locations. If you check my last post, I wrote every city I lived in in Los Angeles because mm. there's so many sub-cities, right? So, um, I drove Santa Monica. I drove the Santa Monica Mall where the um, um, uh, National Guard was. I drove Melrose. I drove Fairfax. All these places were destroyed. I drove Mid Wilshire, which was okay. I drove downtown. I saw City Hall. I drove down Spring, where they exploded a, uh, a Starbucks. And yeah. you know, the news. The news is. Um, the news is a funny thing because they love to twist things and make it worse than it is. You know, and and my consensus, you know, is that people are mad. And some things got broken. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then there were some people who wanted to take advantage of it that had a of couple course. days that had a couple days to do it, but then got shut all the way down when the National Guard got here. Yeah, true. We did see the people running with their shoes in their hands, breaking into shops. Yeah. We do see the news and it's always nice to hear it from somebody who is actually there. So it's, Yeah, I'm it's here, man. I I seen it, you know, I, I went to go walk uh, on the protest two days ago and it was and you know it was peaceful you know it's not what people are making it out to be on the news you know so um i want to give you something here that i wrote that has a rap and a song in it that i think you would really enjoy um oh super uh, pertinent to this. i have i've got a few questions that they want to ask you uh sure. dylan have you uh have you got any advice for an aspiring talent does coming to the U.S. increase the chances of success? Um, you know, that's hard to say because my success in Sri Lanka was because I was from the U.S., right? Because I met Iraj and I got very lucky and I have an American accent and being a rapper 10 years ago with an American accent was unheard of, you know? Yeah, true. In Sri Lanka, so... And it did so, sort of, yeah, sort of increase kind of, the chances, yeah. Exactly. It definitely increased the chances of me being successful in Sri Lanka because By the I, way, I, did your director in the US take a look at your movie here about cricket? What you acted? Yeah, he did. Yeah. And how, what, did, what did he say? That's he because for him, he would have been like, you, you played a village boy. Yeah, he, he yeah. liked it, but he can't understand it because there's no English yeah. subtitle. So he watched yeah. a little bit of it and he was like, okay, cool. But actually what <laughs> happened was, but, but really the truth is I just, I, I had to... I had to audition and do the job, you know, I had to get the job yeah. done. And so, so he liked what I did. So shift with the name, do you think the shift with the name did a good thing? But it was a lot of rebranding. Yeah, it was a lot of rebranding. Yes, I do. Because, um, because I think over time, as you grow as an artist, you want people to know who you are. Like, the, you know, it was a misnomer. Like, the, I changed my name to D-E-L-O-N for Americans. I didn't change it thinking Sri Lankans would call me Daylon, right? I, I changed it for Americans to call me Dillon. Because if I spell it D-I-L-A-N, like I, my real it's name, Dylan. they call me Dylan. And that drives me insane. I hate that name. That's just not a name for me, you know? So I thought, okay, let me spell it phonetically, Dillon. And here, Dillon is D-E-L-O-N, Dillon, right? And then when I got to Sri Lanka, it was like, oh, Daylon, Daylon. I was like, no, no, it's Delon. No, but it's Daylon. I said, I said, no, it's Delon. So, so it caused like a, a, a weird mishap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, confusion just, in both countries. Yeah, so then I just rolled with it for a while. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to change my style. There's no point in keeping the same name. I'll just go back to who I really am. And, and go ahead. Yes, I did have to rebrand. And it took a lot of work and time. But, you know, I've done music for the love of it since I was 12, so I don't really see it as a job. I see it as an opportunity. 
you know that's amazing so what you're going to perform for us is is it a new one is it singhalese is it english what is it so it's in, it's in english and it's got a little rap and a little singing in it and uh it's off an album called songs about love and other stuff which is available on spotify and itunes and all the amazon music so let's see if we can get this right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right here we go Fades off, we can go on, and the pain is where we grow from when it's never easy. Hopes and an overture, I guess I'm just, just an old fool where I won't stop believing. Yeah, I never thought I would see me cry. Looking in my rear view, this was a real goodbye. Some letters to my family, trying to get their eye. They just didn't understand me. So tired of living the lie. People that I lost in the year would have probably died. Kept my mind focused on the path, clear as the sky. Left all of my old friends behind me, because they would have tried to pull me back to this hell hole that I just survived. See, life can get lonely when you're all by your lonesome. Working on your craft, trying to get a gear in motion. What you know about that? All them days that they was coasting, I was sitting in my room writing lyrics, trying to roast them. Now I'm posting. Everything is different. Work is just work. Ain't no secret to be gifted and have a little faith. This is you on your own mission. This is your faith. Just believe what you believe in. Sometimes fades are, we can go on. And the pain is where we grow from where it's never easy. Maybe hopes and an overture. I guess I'm just just an old fool, and I won't stop believing. Well, this is a letter to all the future children always get the facts because people love to twist them the government will still probably be in war and politicians still not on us to the core money's just a way to trade goods and you need it but nothing more important than what you truly believe in be about your family about helping people the only true value in life is how you treat you and if you love yourself then you can love one another and never blame your faults on your sisters and your brothers look inside yourself and see what may have gone wrong there's no fixing others, just learning to be strong. You probably gonna mess up, probably more than once, but have a little patience like you would with the sun. You are our future with these words, I entrust you. I hope this finds you well. P.S. I love you. Let's go. Take me away from all this pain I'm going through. And not trying to stop these tears from falling down on you, yeah. And maybe one day when you look back and think of me Do me a favor and remember the good memories, good memories, yeah The good memories, yeah, yeah Sometimes fades all we can go on And the brain is where we grow from when it's never Easy, maybe hopes and an overture. I just thought I'm just, just an old fool, and I won't stop believing. Ooh, oh, it's never easy. Maybe hopes and an overture. I guess I'm just, just a no fool, and I won't stop believing in you. I'm sorry, my <laughs> one hand is occupied, so one one side clap. <laughs> uh, yes, um, you know, I when I made the introduction about you, I said, you know, you're one of the very few warm people I've met in my career. You always like, you rally everyone around, you speak to everyone, you always give the warm hugs. Um, tell me about how was it when you were growing up? Were you always the very people person? Um, I was, I was. I mean, I, I had a, a rough upbringing like we all do being Sri Lankan because you have such strict parents who just like beat you down and beat you down <laughs> and beat you down for being you, you know? And especially trying to be an artist, it was just a, it was a 
barrage, but <laughs> it's a barrage of upset, you know, from my parents. But I, um, yeah, I've always been friendly. I like people, you know, I like That's people, amazing. you know, I love people. I think they're great. I think there's something to learn from everybody, you know, and and I've, I've, most of my experience, you know, even writing the book, How to Be More Confident with Women, it was the book's premise is to treat every man and woman the same way. You shouldn't treat a woman differently than you treat a man, you know? Why? If I say hi to you, Danu, it's the same way I say hi to a woman. Of the course. problem with men, when they think, when they see a woman because of their conditioning, because of you know, pornography, because of social media, they get this weird twisted idea of how to communicate with somebody. And then they do weird stuff, you know? It's just weird. And so, you know, my communication has always been pretty natural for me. And then uh, when I went to public school, people kept telling me, oh, girls, you have to talk to them this way, talk to them that way. And I tried it and I just failed. And then I decided in seventh grade, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm just gonna do it my own way, just be friends yeah. with people. Yeah. And so since that time, I've pretty much been the same way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I um, love people, man. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, something that I always wanted to know, becoming what you want to be and proving it to the people who you love the most, like your family, will be yeah. the hardest part. You know, it's yeah. not like we are Sri Lankan. So, you know, yeah. we have those very set uh, ideology of what a child should be. You right. Know, and singing is not one of it. Oh, and professionally, absolutely. it's another thing. How yeah. did you convince your parents? I didn't. I didn't. They're not convinced. I, I didn't convince my parents. What I, what I realized was, you know, your, your centeredness, right? How do you... Every man has a way in which they kind of guide themselves through life, right? Um, and some people can be centered by money. Some people can be centered... Uh, by their girlfriend or their wife, by their spouse. Some people can be centered by their family. And, and, and what happens with those types of centers is that your wife can break up with you or your wife can be mad and then all of a sudden you're messed up because your whole center revolves around this person, right? Your family could not like you anymore because you're this and that. Or, and then all of a sudden your center is messed up. And when they like you, you're great. When they don't, you're down. Money, if you're poor, you're down. If you're rich, you're up. You can't center your life based on other things. You have to center your life based on values, right? Whether you're being honest, whether you're holding a t integrity, you know, whether you're showing love to others, you know, these are values that no matter what happens, they don't change your center, right? Because they are always the same way. And so honestly, I, I haven't, but I've changed my center because my center has always been make my parents proud. Right. But now my center is do the right thing. Have integrity, you know, have integrity because you have to live with yourself. Right. Your parents will come and go, you know, your friends will come and go, you know. But if you're not living the truth of what you believe is the correct value for you. Right. Then, you know, you can get swayed by what other people think. That's why I don't care what other people think, you know. When I, when I was out in Sri Lanka during the time of the war and I was going to see what was going on during the time of the war and I gave my opinion, I, didn't, I gave my opinion how I felt, you know. I, people were very upset with me in Sri Lanka, you know, especially people who uh, felt like I was taking sides. I wasn't. I was just seeing what I saw. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I, I, think, I think at the end of the day, you know, if you're value-centered um, with your own honesty and integrity towards self, you know, and not even towards self, towards the group, the pan-determined group, right? Like, you can't be like, I want to sing, so therefore everybody can F off. You get what I'm saying? It has to be more like, is this the right thing to do, considering everything involved, you know? Yeah. Am I keeping integrity to myself? Am I, am I going to be able to survive, uh, you know? But if you go, oh, how does this affect my family? That's different. That's now you centering on your family. How does this affect me? How does it affect what I'm doing in life? Am I doing something honest? Am I being having integrity? Are these values that I that I believe in? You know? So I think I think I I think I honestly didn't accomplish that. But I also think that I don't it's okay. It's not that I don't care, it's just okay. You know? Because I'm happy. You know?
That's the most important thing, happiness. Yeah. I've uh, got and, a few questions here. Uh, we'll just like to quickly read them out to you. All sure, right, sure. question number one. Um, do, you, do you feel that Trump has another chance in the White House? Oh, man, politics. I don't know, dude. I <laughs> suck at politics. <laughs> I suck. I mean, why not? He's a president. He can, he can go for... He could go for re-election and he can get re-elected. So just by basic statement of fact, he definitely has another chance, right? All right. Uh, the other question, would you do a collaboration with a Sri Lankan artist? If so, who uh, would you pick? I, 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 I don't know any more Sri Lankan artists. I only know the guys from 10 years ago, right? I know BNS. What? You have completely all gone off the scene. Yeah. I don't even I don't even know how to attach to the scene because my single is not good enough to listen to music that's in singlese or town. Right. Right. So like imagine you guys listening to music in Japanese. You guys would be like, Well, sounds cool, but I don't understand anything. Right. You you listen to music because you can relate to it. It has a of feeling. Course. There's a story right? that connects you. Exactly. So like in terms of English music in Sri Lanka, I, I don't know because most of those guys are like making music in Australia or England and then yeah. they get played in Sri Lanka. You know what I mean? But the Sri Lankan artists that do Sri Lankan music do it in Sinhalese. So I, I, I just don't know, you know, because I can't understand it. Especially yeah. because when they write in Sinhalese, it's even w harder than the regular speaking Sinhalese. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh, man, now I have no clue what they're talking about. Yeah. You know, if they use colloquial Sinhalese, it would have been easier. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm never adverse to doing collaborations. I think it has to do more with you know the feeling and the vibe you know does it make sense do you want to do it is, is, is it good you know i think mm -hmm. those are more impo i think those are more important factors you know i'm not really considering uh too much about like whether they're famous or whether they're not you know what i mean but i'm an artist by trade so like you know i have a manager and an agent so it's it's you know it's it's whatever works and whatever yeah. makes the most sense excellent um one more question. I think this will be a last one. Um, do you identify yourself as a Sri Lankan or do you identify yourself as a citizen of the United States? It's a bit of a tough I, I both. Yeah, yeah, I think that's... both. I think 100% both because I have Salon tied on my back and Jaya Singh and Singhala on my arm. And I was born and raised an American. I'm very freaking American. You know, my girlfriend's from a small town in Illinois, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I can relate to her for two reasons. One, because she's American, we share the same culture. And two, because she's a small town, which is like Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Right? Yeah. So Sri Lanka is a small town. Like everybody knows everybody in Colombo. But then if you go out, it's even smaller. Right? Mm. So so the, the culture we have is, is giving. It's forgiving. It's you know, inviting people for food, it's, it's, it's ritualistic uh, weddings and, 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 you know, random stuff that we all share in common, like aunties being weird all the time, <laughs> <and> judgmental, <laughs> you know? Uh, so, so you get that in small towns because that's what the small town is. Everybody knows what you did. Everybody has a script in their mind of what they think you should become. And when you go against their script, they get very blown away at why it happened, you know? So there's, I feel both very much. I feel very much proud to be both and I am both, so. Um, what has this COVID-19 taught you? Staying at home, lockdown. You were singing out and entertaining people. Oh yeah, in front of my garage. Yeah, that was nice. I'm still, yeah, I'm still doing that. We do it every Friday, added another artist. We had LA Times cover the story, in fact. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, this is what I think. Um, I think that life gives you lemons sometimes. You gotta make lemonade, dude. You know what I'm saying? It's not the first time we've been given lemons. Yeah, this may be just like a lemon everybody got. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Everybody got this lemon. You know what I'm saying? Across like, the no, world. Across the world, we're just throwing lemons out, you know? Yeah. But, um, but you know, I've been given so many lemons before, I just know how to make lemonade. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've, I've been in situations where I've lost my whole career because of speaking out, you know, against the LTTE, you know, or where I've, I've, uh, I don't know, I started off in, in real estate, quit my job, did music, had a number one on MTV, and then had a really bad manager who, you know, destroy, you know, was part and parcel of destroying my career here in the United States. You know, I've been handed lemons left, right and center. 
Um, and a lot of people think, oh, well, your life isn't like mine. Listen, we all got beat by our parents. If you're Sri Lankan, you most likely got messed up by your parents, you know? So you already have that ingrained upset up here. You know what I'm saying? That's like, you know what? F you, I'm going to do it my way and I'm going to show you. So that doesn't help either, right? Because then, mm. and then you're just like giving the lemons back to somebody else. Are, are, you are giving cocktails. I'm all about the cocktails, Rutnam. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm all about the cocktail. Well, whiskey, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, I didn't read any of these. Um, but anyway, the point is, is that like during this time, and I'll just share with you a very interesting anecdote. I went to Whole Foods, had to wear my mask, right? Mm. was sitting going to get some cheese and wine because me and my girl were like well we never eat cheese and wine we might as well have that since we gotta sit at home all day mm. meet a guy meet a guy standing behind me and he's like oh yeah i live um he's like bro i live on tamashanter which is like a street like two houses down i was like oh right, he, lives outside. he ended up coming to my house we started hanging out found out he's a bass player and drummer oh wow we we started making music together we created a whole new band of rap pop music that's insane under a whole new name we finished a five we're finishing a five track ep all the while my girl goes Delon, i saw this idea of someone's playing outside the garage in front of their garage and just playing shows i did one show four people showed up we handed out 10 flyers uh 30 people showed up we handed out 100 flyers 60 people showed up now we handed out 200 flyers we'll see and then i brought a new artist to come and play who usually I opened for now she's opening for me. Like, I don't think that life, I mean, don't get me wrong. I lost a lot of money, a lot of money. I lost 19 shows and you know, a lot of money, like a lot. What, what most people make in one year, I lost in two and a half months because I was working on s such powerful stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, but if I focus on that, I, I fall. I have to focus on creating. That's where you rise, right? Of course, I have to fix those things. It doesn't mean I just like take take it off and just chuck it. You get what I'm saying? I have to be responsible for them, but it doesn't mean I have to, you know, push all my attention down into that thing that I lost. You know what I'm saying? So I think I think um, if life gives you lemons, you gotta make lemonade or make a cocktail, as uh, Ruthman says. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And put some whiskey in it and, and find your way. Now, I mean. You got to be cognizant in life. Of course, drinking is good here and there, but just be cognizant, man, and find find the positive points that you could find, right? If I'm at home all day, that means I get to spend time with my girlfriend. If I'm at home all day, I could work on all those projects, right, that I didn't get to work on because I was working. For instance, I built my girl an art desk. I can show it to you if you like. I built a workbench. I built shelves in my garage. I built a workout space, all built out of wood. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Um, I worked on my house. I renovated stuff. I got stuff painted here. You know, like there is work to be done, man. There's self work to be done. There's meditation. There's reading. I've read two books since I've been, um, you know, quarantined up. You know, I, I started giving real estate seminars because I own a, a real estate finance company. Um, and so I, I started giving seminars to kids who don't know anything about real estate because I studied that in college. Um, I, I have gotten very, very, very busy. I'm writing my second book. I got my first book picked up. I got my movie sold in America. All that happened during COVID. You know? That's amazing. And it's all how you see life. And that's the most important yeah. thing. For those who are watching, this man woke up really early for all this interview because it's like <laughs> 7 a.m. there. Um, yeah, yeah something of that nature. Yeah. <laughs> I actually asked for an earlier time. It was like 5 o'clock. He's like, no. <laughs> no, man. I'm going to be fast asleep, dreaming about going to the gym. I'll tell you something. What's happened over this time, because we can't use the gym, right? Mm. I built a gym. But, you know, the gym is a, it's a world. You go into the world and you go lift weights and you do your pull-ups and you do your sit-ups and you run, you know, and everyone's there. So I miss that world a lot. That's one of my favorite worlds, right? So that's the world that's kept I me the most young. I wish I get there. Yeah, and, and I can't go. So like two nights ago, I literally was dreaming about doing squats on a squat rack in a gym. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, everyone says, you know, if you don't know, if you continue going to the gym, you'll fall in love with it and you'll always want to go there. I've continuously gone and I've always just not liked it. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Danu, the thing is, is it, it's, you, need, you need hatting on the gym, like how to use the machines and what they're meant for. Like when I was 15, I had this guy who was like 40 years old. It looked like he was 25. And he showed me how to use the equipment and what it was used for.
as, you know, let's try to get bigger. I, I use it as a way to focus my attention on my body because we're two things, right? We're our spirit and our body and we have to give attention to our body. Otherwise our body just breaks down. So you got to give attention to it by way of food and working out. Mm. So whether you like it or not, either you give attention to it or it gives attention to you by getting fat or getting hurt. Right. So, you know, you got to do it. There's no other way around it. So, yeah, I, yeah I, you know, that's the one thing I definitely miss that I hope we get back soon. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, on that note, I'm going to say thank you for joining me today. Uh, for those who are here, you know, you are, you're always around. You're always known and loved. And uh, lots of people sending you questions. Uh, there's going to be music by him. There's going to be a film by him. There's going to be lots happening. Uh, from this uh, from this Sri Lankan loving boy who's in the U.S. Um, and, yeah, uh, and you, if you don't mind, uh, can I let them know that you can always find my new albums under Delon J, D-I-L-A-N, and then space J-A-Y. My Instagram is that, and my music is there, and we do so much work for the community here in Tarzana and for Los Angeles and for the Sri Lankan community just by way of staying positive and letting people know that it can be done. You can be successful in entertainment. You know, Donna is a great example. Donna has been in entertainment for over 10 years, you know, um, being a spokesperson and a speaker and out on television. I mean, what a great thing that you've done, you know. I, I'm so proud of the guys that are still around, still working and still happy because you know that they really love it. And I know you really yeah. love it too. So Definitely. I, I have to put appreciation there for Danu as well because he's done an excellent job with his career and I'm very proud of him. Thank you so very much. So I'm going to call it quits here, but thank you so very much as always. It's wonderful to talk to you. So positive. Give my love to your girlfriend and your family. We shall speak to you soon. All right. Peace. You can always DM me on my Instagram and I'll respond. See you guys yes. later. All right. Thanks, take Danu. care. All right. Bye. So uh, that's Delon joining us on uh uh, Insta Live today for a quarantine version of uh, Date with Nanu. I'm going to see you with another episode that's going to be quite fascinating and interesting. Someone who was also the cover girl of The High magazine, excellent youth leader. Uh, she has been commended for her work across the world. We'll be speaking to her very soon. That will be on Sunday. Till I do that, you have yourself a great day and a safe, safe Friday and Saturday until I see you on Sunday. Have yourself a good one. Thank you for joining us. Take care and God bless.